Okay, so according to that math packet that I put on Angel, you should have done this. Here goes. You should have multiplied these three numbers together. And your calculator probably said something like 411.424 cubic meters. But you can't leave it like that because of sig figs. Three sig figs, two sig figs, two sig figs. You always round your answer off to the same number of sig figs as your lousiest. So what's your lousiest? Two sig figs. So that means 411.424 has to be changed to 410 without a decimal point. That tells you that there's the guess right there in the tenths, tens place, not the tenths, tens place. All right. Now, what about uncertainty? Oh, here comes the tricky part. How do you figure out the uncertainty? Well, that packet taught you two ways. One way I call high-low, and the other way I call uh, percent uncertainty. The first one is high-low. What do you do for high-low? Well, what's the highest this could be? 14. What's the highest this could be? 9.4. What's the highest this could be? 3.44 plus 0 0.05 is 3.49. So if you multiply these three numbers together, you would get the highest it could be and still be in the range of uncertainty. Well, that gives you something like, uh, let's see, um, where am I going to put this? That's going to give you a high of 459.284 on your calculator. You haven't rounded yet. Okay, the lowest it could be, if you multiplied the lowest this could be, which is 12 uh, times 9.0 times 3.39, multiply those three numbers together, and you get something like 366.12 cubic meters. Now, do you see how that's the highest and that's the lowest? What if you subtracted those two from each other? You'd get something like 93.164 cubic meters is the range of high to low. Divide that by 2 and you end up getting the plus or minus which comes out to about 46.58. Now, do you report that here as 410 plus or minus 46.58? No, because now you're saying the guess here is the tens place but over here you're good to the hundredths place. So you have to round this answer off to agree with where you had to round that off. So how do you round this off to the tens place? It could be either 40 or 50. So because this is bigger than uh, 4.99999, this turns into 50. So it's plus or minus 50 cubic meters. Okay? Now there's a whole other technique. The other technique is called percent uncertainty. Now you might think that one was pretty easy, why don't I just learn that one? And that would be fine. But the other one actually for your calculator is a whole lot easier. Let me show you. It's a percent uncertainty. And that means what you do is you take the percent uncertainty. Like for instance, 1 divided by 13 equals the percent uncertainty. And it comes out to be 0 0.076923 if you don't round. In other words, if you're off by 1 out of 13, you're off by about 7.7%. That's how off you are on that number. So if you do um, uh, the 9.2, you take 0.2 and you divide by 9.2, you end up getting the percent uncertainty for that, which is 0 0.0217391 if you don't round. What if you took 0.05 and you divide it by 3.44, then you get that percent uncertainty, which is 0 0.0145348. Now, you can't add the uncertainties. When you're multiplying these numbers, you can only add the percent uncertainties. If you were adding numbers, like if you were finding the perimeter, or for your lab, if you're adding up a whole bunch of volumes, and then subtracting a bunch of other volumes, then you simply just add the uncertainties. Even if you're subtracting the numbers, like one volume taking away from the whole volume, you're still adding the uncertainties. That's easy. I don't even think I have to go over that, just read the packet. But for multiplying numbers together to find volumes and areas, 
you can't just add these uncertainties. You either have to do high low or you have to do percent uncertainties. Now these add 7.7% plus another 2% plus another 1.5% comes out to about 0.1131969. 0.11 means about 11%. So now take the 0.11 and multiply that by the number. What number? The actual original volume, which was I think 411.424, and then times this number. 411 was before you rounded it to 410. So if you multiply that number times that number, son of a gun, if you don't get something like. 46.58. Sound familiar? Plus or minus 46.58. But do I leave it like that? Oh no, just like I rounded this to 410, I have to round this to plus or minus, plus or minus 50. So folks, that's how to do percent uncertainty or high-low. I prefer percent uncertainty because with a calculator, if you have one in your hand, you could just do 1 divided by 13 plus 0.2 divided by 9.2 plus 0.05 divided by 3.4 equals and then multiply it by the actual volume and then you automatically get the uncertainty. Real quick, boom, 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 right through your calculator. The high-low seems to take some time, but it kind of makes more sense. So I wanted to show you both techniques. Folks, I hope that helps with your lab, but boy, am I expecting your lab to be very thorough and showing that you know how to do this like I did it, but you do it with the volumes in your room and the volumes of the things in your room that you're subtracting from the empty room before you convert it to molecules. Don't forget, even the molecules, the final answer has to have a plus or minus how many molecules. How do you do that? Well, this is off by 11%. Well, then you better have the number of molecules in the room off by 11%. So whatever 11% is of the total molecules in the room that you calculated should give you the uncertainty in the number of molecules in the room. Hey, good luck. Get that lab in. Thanks.